This video is going to be a film study look at Marlon Humphrey's play from the Ravens' Week 9 win over the Seahawks. A little bit late in the week to be producing this, but I feel like I want to document how well he's playing in video format so that myself and other people can go back and look later and compare it to 2022. I'll be honest with you, coverage-wise, I think he's given us the same thing he did in 2022, which is just elite coverage. It doesn't matter whether it's zone, man, any of our split field read, pat, match coverages, whatever you want to call it. He's just not being targeted. I'll be honest with you, it's so difficult to find action footage of him to use for a, a picture for this thumb, thumbnail because they're just not there. The three places I look for pictures to utilize, there's no action shots there because he's not being targeted. He will eventually. The Pittsburgh Steelers are targeting him. We know that. George Pickens beat him up the right sideline deep in a key situation to give them the lead, basically the game-winning touchdown, essentially, in week five. I don't think Marlon Humphrey was completely healthy from the standpoint of being ready to play 60 minutes. Not fit enough to play the full game at that high a level. I thought he played exceptionally well in the first half of that game, but our entire defense did. So far for me through 2023, he looks like the same guy in 2000, from 2022. He just does. And, it's, and additionally, I think NFL teams tell you what they think of your defensive backs sometimes by how often they go at them. There's a couple of situations here where I think certain quarterbacks would throw the football to DK Metcalf. Marlon did a great job on him. He did. There's one play late that I'll show you. I think I've got 11 plays queued up to ch so you can check it out. By the fourth or fifth play, your mind should already be met up, I would guess in terms of how well he's playing. But there is one late where I think DK Metcalf is going to be possibly available to get the ball down by the end zone, there's, and there's going to be a huge collision between DK and Geno Stone, but Michael Pierce deflects the football like we've done many times. All right, so let's get to the film. This first play is actually a second and eight, mislabeled as a second and ten. It's a screen to the top side. This is what Marlon Humphrey's done since he showed up here in Baltimore. He's He wins the physical matchups. This is Bobo, the rookie wide receiver. He's like 6'3", 6'4", for Seattle. Some people say he blocks like a tight end. He's very physical, and he's got a lot of attributes. Marlon Humphrey wins here. This is a win for him. He's resetting the line of scrimmage in terms of pushing Bobo back into the behind, beyond the line of scrimmage and then also forcing it inside, allowing Queen and Owe to pursue. And then, oh, by the way, he gets off the block and gets involved in a tackle with his chest. This is just Marlon Humphrey football you know, holding him to a four-yard gain where so far this season when Bobo's been able to deal with corners or, or, or slot DBs, he's been able to overwhelm them with size, physicality, and strength, not Marlon Humphrey. That's just never been the deal. That's just never been the dynamic when a receiver's trying to block him. Hell, it's not even the dynamic sometimes when it's tight ends. Second possession, this is a, a cover two. I'd, I'd call it a Tampa two because you got Roquan uh, running between the hashes. Let it flow through one more time. It's a it's a missed sack opportunity, I think, for Owe. And we're physical. We finish so many plays in a physical manner. I think it's Millette who's going to come in here and basically chop Geno Smith down. But you can see uh, Roquan is running between the hashes. Marlon and Brandon Stevens are going to be the flat players. Kyle Hamilton's off screen to your right. You don't see him. So it's a Tampa 2. Just an example to show you that we're playing multiple coverages. Marlon and the entire defense are executing them well. I think Queens got needs a little bit more depth here, to be honest with you, down into the boundary. Away, great rush, doesn't finish it off. I think he could have three or four more sacks. Definitely three, maybe four, but you can see how physical we finish the play. Man illustration, him against, I think it's JSN up top on a third and four second possession. He's all over him, all over him. This ball's deflected by Clowney. This is one of the situations where Marlon, when he's playing man on people, he just flatlines people. And what I say about what I mean by flatline is the first round knockout. As soon as the ball is snapped, he wins. He wins with the punch. He turns and gets hands on the receiver. It's it's a complete washout the rest of the route. And this is just what he's been doing since 2022 when he came back really healthy and put together what I think was an all pro caliber season. I mean, he didn't get that designation to my knowledge. Third possession, again, man, this is against DK Metcalf. DK actually is going to push off near the top of the route, somewhere between the 45 and the 40. We'll let it flow through one more time. I think it's three deep, three under, but basically a man call to his side. And this is what Marlon does. Interestingly, he was playing on the right side more of this game, and Brandon Stevens was on the left. We had flipped that in recent weeks 
it did seem like at times we were trying to get Marlon matched up on DK. He has the physicality, the speed, the, the hand strike consistency and accuracy to deal with a, a physical guy like DK Metcalf, perhaps better than Brandon Stevens. I'm not saying uh, that I think that's the case in all situations, but maybe that's why they matched him up over there so much. Fourth possession, it's a, it's a first and ten. And he's going to be covering Lockett. One of the few routes where I feel like he gets lost a little bit. He's very handsy. And as soon as his hands become disconnected to the receiver on this route, Lockett gets some space. You can see it at the top side of the screen. So he's all over Lockett being real physical. And he's still within the five. He's right at the barrier for the five-yard um, designation. As soon as his hands become disconnected, Lockett is open. Geno Smith, just the pocket is collapsed all over him, and the best he can do is try to get it to the tight end versus Patrick Queen, still falls incomplete. Fourth possession again. It's a third and four. It's covering DK Mann. It appears as if this is Geno Stone's interception, by the way. It appears as if the safety dissuades Geno uh, Smith from even looking over here. You can see he's checking this side first. It's basically going to be a, a deep out by two, and then one I think should run vertical or something towards the sideline. You guys are kind of losing the frame and arrows there. My apologies. But I'm, I'm guessing that since there's a second safety over here to DK side, that that's why Geno Smith doesn't look over here at all. That safety's reading Geno Smith. If, if Geno Smith was to look over to DK and Marlon's side, then that safety would get depth and start helping out with the route. He's just basically back there cheating and reading Geno Smith's eyes, just like Geno Stone is, and gets an interception. But I think Marlon does a great job on DK generally in this game. The 50-yard catch, which I don't know that I show you in this video, is not Marlon's fault. It's a deep dig and a really nice route designed by Seattle. Fifth possession, second and eight. And DK just basically runs his route right into him. This is always sack, I believe. Always spin sack. You can see always mid-spin right here. But Metcalf's just basically going to run the route right into Marlon. So it looks like a hard-coded route. And pre-snap, I'm not sure if my editing um, allows you guys to see it, but pre-snap, no, it doesn't. My apologies. Pre-snap, Marlon and Hamilton had communicated something. Marlon originally was up here. And the tight end motion down, like, a, like the short motion that I did a video on uh, Wednesday night. I'm not sure if you guys checked it out or not. I'll try to link it up here now. But... After the communication between these two, Marlon backed off. It's almost like sometimes, I don't want to say we know the route because that brings up the whole Michigan thing. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is I think our guys are extremely well trained and prepared for the route combinations based on certain splits and certain players being over there. This looks like a hard-coded route that Marlon and Queen pretty much knew was coming, even though Queen gets kind of lost on the out and up by the tight end. Doesn't matter, Owe gets the sack along with, I think Urban is there and someone else. Late second quarter. This is DK's 50-yard catch. I think this is just a nice route, a nice job of, of getting Geno Smith time. And Brandon Stevens is supposed to be locked onto the tight end backside. It's a trip set to the top part of, the, of our screen. One, two, three. You got the tight end backside here. Stevens theoretically would be manned up on him. If the running back, let's say the running back was to release here, you'd either get a Roquan running with him or the edge defender peeling out, depending on what his, his blitz peel rules are. But as it stands, the tight end stays into block. So watch Brandon Stevens. He's got no work, so he's looking for work. He sees a vertical challenge in Roquan, so he's going to help out over the top of that. Can't blame him. I don't. I don't. I mean, would you like him to be a part of this deep dig? Well, yes, you would. I'd also like Queen to be involved in it, but there's inside linebacker coaches that'll tell you, oh, yeah, my, my inside linebacker is going to help defend the deep, deep dig. Yeah, it's tough to do. I'd like to see Queen play it better. If you're going to be picky, you'd like to see Brandon Stevens get involved. But look where DK Metcalf is lined up. The time that, and it's an even deeper route than I just drew up, the time that Geno Smith has to throw this football with a five-man rush. Theoretically, it could be a five-man rush. Harrison isn't rushing. We've got Harrison and Tavius Robinson on the field. We don't get, generate great pass rush other than Matabike. Just too much time. So I don't certainly don't fault Marlon for that. It appears as if we're playing some type of quarters or split field coverage to his side. And Brandon Stevens is looking for work from the bottom side 
unfortunately, DK Metcalf runs onto the open space. Sometimes you just got to give credit to the offense. I feel like that's one of those. All right, late second quarter after that 50-yard catch, he's on Metcalf again, not targeted. This one's completed to the top side. I think it's Lockett against um, Stevens. Hamilton on the blitz. The center does a nice job getting out here to pick up Hamilton. Marlon's got outside leverage on Metcalf. Safety help to the inside. Looks like man free to me. Safety help to the inside and also Roquan Smith being a bonus uh, bonus guy to the inside. So Marlon's got outside leverage. DK Metcalf potentially open if uh, Geno Smith wants to get him to football, but the pocket was haywire crazy. A couple of plays later, He's on the tight end, blankets him. This ball could clearly be thrown better by Geno Smith to DK Metcalf down to the bottom. I think it's a man free. So I think we've got man Stevens down here. Millette on Metcalf. Hamilton on number three. Marlon on the tight end backside. And Geno Stone is up in the middle of the field reading Geno Smith's eyes. It's just a little bit late trying to decide. He sees Smith looking, but he's got two routes over here. It doesn't know whether he can break yet or not, and that's one of the reasons why he, quote, looks a little bit late in his break over there. We're not talking about Marlon at this point. We're talking about Geno Stone. It's one of the reasons why some people said he looked a little bit, bit, a little bit late breaking on that ball. He's got two potential routes threatening his air, and he doesn't know which one Geno Smith is throwing to, and he's reading the quarterback's eyes. So that's one of the reasons why he's unable to get there in time, and Geno or Geno. Um, DK Metcalf looks so open, even though Geno Smith loses him. This is the one I think that Geno Stone and DK are headed for a huge collision if this ball is not tipped by Michael Pierce. You can see Marlon ends up getting turned around. His chest is facing the sideline because he thought that's where DK was going. DK's crossed him up, brought it back inside. Marlon knows he's got help to the inside, but this is man all across the board. This is man, and this ball gets tipped by Pierce, but if not, you can see what's setting up. I mean, DK is running this, and Stone is breaking on it. I mean, hell, it could be an interception. I think Geno Stone's a, a step late for it to be a pick, but it's certainly going to be the potential for a huge collision there. One of the few times where I felt like somebody a clean, I don't want to say cleanly beat Marlon, because Marlon's still in position to defend it. He's connected to the receiver. But with DK Metcalf's size and having even a half a step or quarter step on you, Throwing the ball out here makes him available for a touchdown. But Geno Stone is, at this point, just the eraser and is going to get involved in that play even if Michael Pierce doesn't tip it. Early third quarter, last play that I'll show you. I don't know. I feel like you really don't need to see more, but there's two other plays that I didn't show you where he's just covering people at a high level. It feels like beating a dead horse at this point. But his reactions, I just love how he puts his foot in the ground. T-step, boom, right here. Puts his foot in the ground, comes downhill. Now, as soon as he trusts his reads, he trusts his reads, he sees things. My man Stacy Van Diver in the Discord always says that Marlon played a linebacker in high school, and he reacts like one when it's run to his side. He's going to get involved. He doesn't necessarily finish the tackle here. I think you've got Tavius Robinson, Roquan Smith, Malik Harrison there. Uh, they're going to take the tackle from him at some point. I think he's playing at an incredibly high level. You know, was he? Did he have better seasons statistically with interceptions, forced fumbles, and all the things that people want to um, point as the first example of Graham playing great pass defense or great defense overall? Yeah, of course. He's had seasons where he forced, I think he had a season where he forced six fumbles or something like that and had four interceptions that year, if memory serves. Maybe I'm mixing up two years together at this point. But I think the film shows that he's playing really well against some super talented guys, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett's a high-level receiver who only had three catches against us. DK Metcalf had one. Geno Smith and the offensive line's inability to protect clearly played a role in that. The Cleveland Browns, the Cincinnati Bengals, some of the teams we face later in the season, is their offensive line situation going to be any better? I don't know, man. The NFL season is a war of attrition, and people go down, you lose starters, and somebody has to step up. We can't turn down crediting Marlon Humphrey and other guys for playing great pa pass defense because the other team's offensive line was struggling or the other team's quarterback missed some throws. It is what it is. Marlon Humphrey's playing at just as high a level as he showed in 2022 right now. Maybe not in week five against the Steelers. 
Certainly not early in the season when he was out for injury, and we have no film of him, obviously. Marlon Humphrey is Marlon Humphrey. Surprise, surprise. You guys let me know what you think of his coverage skills, how he's playing so far. If you agree with me or disagree, that's fine too. I put the video up on Twitter as well so people could check it out. Let me know what you think. If you think other Ravens fans will enjoy this film study, yet another film study video of Marlon Humphrey playing great pass defense, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.